so today our topic is stress strain diagram so before we go for the stress and strain diagram first let's focus about the few definition what do you mean by stress so we know the stress is a force per unit area of a material okay so stress is depend defined by sigma equals to force per unit area equals to so what is the unit for force is newton and what is the unit for area is meter square so what is the unit for sigma sigma that means stress is newton per meter square now now what do you mean by strain strain is we know it's a ratio between the change in length by the original length that is change in length by the original length that is a length of a material so imagine there is a bar both the side it causes an tensile force p or or f it can be written either of that tensile force so the original length is l so when it is getting extended so there is some change in length so this change in length by the original length gives the meaning of strain which have no units now we focus what do you mean by hooke's law hooke's law is when the stress is directly proportional to the strain and after that it is very important thing within the elastic limit this within the elastic limit what do you mean by elastic limit suppose see the same figure a load is applied a tensile load is applied on this bar there is a bar a tensile load is applied after i release a load what happens when this bar of a material has a capability to restore back to its original position when it has a capability to restore back its original position that is a property of elasticity so as we keep on giving the force on both the side extending there will be some change in length and after we release a load if the material doesn't has a capacity to come back to its original position or original length or dimension that means it has got some colors deformation but when it has capability to restore or regain back to its original position or dimension that is a form of within the elastic limit that is having a elastic nature so so when the stress is directly proportional to the strain within the elastic limit this says the hooke's law so we have a proportional to remove the proportionality we give some constant term that e so e can be written as e equals to sigma by epsilon that is a strain so what is sigma force by area and what is epsilon del l by l that is change in length by original length okay so if you see there here we don't have unit this is newton per meter square and here no unit okay so what is the final of this e u e of unit of e is newton per meter square so this is called as this constant is called as young's modulus so what is young's modulus e is an ratio between the stress and strain the unit is newton per meter square now another let's focus on another uh, ratio called poisson's ratio it denote by the word uh, by the letter mu so mu it's a ratio between the lateral strain by the longitudinal strain so what do you mean by lateral strain when see this figure again it this consider this in circular cross section of a diameter d so when there is a elongation in this uh, when the uh, load is applied there is some elongation and when there is elongation the diameter gradually decreases so what is a change in diameter when there is elongation that is a lateral strain 
so lateral strain by longitudinal strain so uh, what do we write there the change in diameter by diameter original diameter by the change in length by original length so it can be also written as a 1 by m here also this ratio doesn't have any unit focus view of this formula this is a combination of all the three modulus e means a young's modulus g means a rigidity modulus and the k means a bulk modulus so the first one the first equation says that it is a ratio it is a relation between the young's modulus and the rigidity modulus so you have to remember this e equals to twice of g into 1 plus mu whereas in the second formula what it says that e equals this is a relation between the young's modulus and the bulk modulus that is a k it is e equals to 3 times of k um, open the bracket 1 minus 2 mu 2 mu here minus 2 mu okay and mu can also be written as equals to 1 by m so this is also you can write in terms of that and the third one third one is a combination of all the three modulus that is the young's modulus bulk modulus and the rigidity modulus you remember very uh, when we are school we used to say we are in kg or something remember the kg or a unit of a mass you remember that is 9 kg by 3 k plus g it's very uh, very easy to remember this formula it's nothing hard you remember the word kg okay so when you write uh, this e equals to everywhere we are writing in terms of e so here also e equals to that 9 kg you remember 9 kg and 3 square is 9 so 3k plus g okay so this is a way you can remember it, this formula easily stress strain curve so in our y axis we have a stress and in our x axis we have our strain so this is a curve we have some few five important points first one is the elastic limit yield point ultimate limit and the breaking point the few points the four points are there and after that we have the strain hardening so what do you mean by strain hardening the, uh, the lower yield point to that ultimate limit that uh, the region between those fees is called as a strain hardening what happens there it for ductile material it gives how much strain by plastic deformation it shows this property and uh, what do you mean by necking necking is that from the point from the ultimate limit to the breaking point the region between those it gives an necking point or necking region rather we call it say and what do you mean by last limit? In last limit we say we as per the Hooke's law that uh, the when until the stress is directly proportional to the strain okay within the elastic limit means when the load is applied to a body or a system or a material when we release the load and when it has a capability to come back to its original position okay so that is the limit this is all we call as a limit of proportionality this this point or we can say as 0 to A, then B, C, D, E. Let's name that. So the 0 to A point is called as a elastic limit or limit of proportionality. As we keep on giving load on a structure or a material, after this limit what happens? It increases some amount of stress with respect to strain but when we release that load it doesn't come back to its original position but it comes somewhat regain regain but doesn't completely come back to its original position so as we increase in uh, giving strain that is change in length with respect to original length what happens there is a yield point okay after that if we keep on increase the load what happens what we can see there is a curve called C, the C, D, E, you can see the curve and the D point you see we gives an maximum yield stress, we call as maximum yield stress. What do you mean by maximum yield stress? At the point where the, the maximum stress occur 
this 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 can only happen only for the ductile material only for the ductile material this kind of maximum yield stress or the ultimate limit occurs only for the ductile material so as we give the load on the structure what happens this region keep on thinning it and there will be keep on increase in there is a keep on increase in the material structure okay okay and after that after this region the d point when we keep on in giving load on the system or a material what happens this this region no forms a necking like our neck okay so keep on necking 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 and some point what happens it get raptures raptures or we can call as breaking by increasing load that is call as a breaking point at the point where the after in putting giving load the material fractures or break that is called as a breaking point and from this um, point uh, uh, a to e the total nature is known as a plastic behavior or plastic deformation behavior two of the patterns that is uh, how it looks for brittle material if it is a brittle material you see when it has drawn with the stress uh, stress versus strain the line can see it's a correctly linear curve it's a straight line okay the example of brittle material is a glass uh, then what you can chalk and etc huh? these are the properties of a um, brittle material now let's go for a copper if there is a copper how it looks like there is no buckling uh, much buckling like uh, there is no point of yield stress and maximum directly it creates a maximum and it raptures here it raptures here there is a property of a copper material now let's see some comparison of various curves so here we have four curves that is a b c d so uh, each curve says its each properties of or characteristics of the curve the curve a says that's the strongest and the stiffness have the maximum strongness this case a uh, maximum strongest and the stiffness and uh, curve b represents it's a most brittle why because it's directly raptures here curve c says it's a mostly ductile in nature and this d says that since uh, the properties which uh, it raptures before this thing so it, it it's a ductile it's also a ductile material who but material whose stress is low or we can say whose stress is low okay so how if if the question comes in that way like uh, they have given this kind of curves and how you can predict the which one have the ma maximum slope see the strong and the stiffness the material causes like have a maximum slope then the brittle you see the brittle you can find out like there there won't be any buckling buckling form or no curves okay it's a directly a linear curve, linear straight line so those kind of uh, curve is mostly a uh, brittle like a uh, glass chalk uh, etc etc and uh, then this one you curve that, that I previously have shown some uh, copper or aluminium kind of soft material or this can be other if there is a comparison between C and D this can be a mild steel hmm? This can be a mild steel too and if there is a comparison then obviously the low stress causes by the aluminium this can be an option like that so you accordingly have to choose the right option in the time point of exam now here another few different uh, um, buckles of curves are shown it is another a b c d see here compared to previous one see here 
this A1 shows a property as a myelcin and the B1 you see what is the difference between A and B. The yield point are very low and that uh, Young's uh, that a uh, ultimate uh, point is also very narrow. So when there is a comparison between these two, so obviously you make sure that the point, the curve A is an ductile material. Material and make sure this is an mild steel. Okay. And the curve B is for aluminium or copper. Now see if the point, the curve C you see that directly it comes and breaks here. So obviously it is an brittle material like glass, chalk, etc. Yeah. And see the curve D, it is going a reverse parabolic form. Reverse parabolic, it is the curve is going towards upward direction. Okay. This are the property for the elastomers. Or what we call as a elastic material. Okay, like rubber. This is an example. Hope my tutorial was useful for you guys.